What's up, baseball players, parents, and coaches? I'm Coach Dan Blewett, and in today's video, we're going to talk about good versus bad stealing situations, when you should go, when you shouldn't go, and when the risk doesn't meet the reward. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. I'm a former pro pitcher. In the description below, you'll find my books, my other online resources, other videos. So definitely subscribe to the channel and stick around because I've got lots more content on everything baseball. So in today's video, we're gonna cover stealing situations, some good ones, some bad ones. And the first thing I wanna mention is, number one, it takes a lot of understanding of your strengths and weaknesses as a runner to understand when you can probably make it, when you can't make it. The other thing I wanna mention is for coaches, I think it makes a lot of sense to give your players more leeway and explain these situations so they understand when a, they should be pretty much trying to find a way to go or when they should be pretty much shut down and know they're not gonna steal a base in this situation or that situation. So we'll go over some of those today, but still having good com uh, communication is really important for helping young players develop and improve their baseball IQ. So first thing, first situation here is if a pitcher just forgets or the catcher has a terrible arm or either way, they're just like essentially not paying attention to you at first base or second base, and you're very, very sure that you're gonna be in there almost standing up, then you should pretty much have free reign to take that base in almost all situations. Obviously, I don't recommend stealing when it's a blowout. I think it just ends up embarrassing the other team. If you don't need the runs, you don't need the bases, don't do that. Um, but any other time, if you feel like you're going to walk into third base because the pitcher just has forgotten to throw over, he hasn't thrown over in a couple innings, or he just clearly is just in the same rhythm every time, or just has essentially, again, just forgot about you at the base, then go for it. Runners should know that. Um, they should know that, hey, if I'm fast enough to steal, and the guy just clearly has forgotten about me or the catcher has no chance in throwing me out, then you should have pretty much free reign to take off anytime you want. So that's number one. Number two is a dead inning steal. This, what I mean by this is, say there's no one on and there's two outs and you're at the plate, you get walked and you're on first base. Now it's gonna take at least two more hits to score you in most situations, unless you have a big power guy that pumps one into the gap. And with two outs already, it's pretty unlikely that you'll string together the number of hits you need to score that run. Because again, after you get two outs as a pitcher, you've pretty much like killed the inning. It's It occasionally happens that they'll have a two out rally, but it's really rare because again, they only got one out to play with. So in these almost dead innings, stealing second can be a really big boost to your team because now you stole second. Now, even the worst hitter on your team hits a blooper over the infield and now you score because you're in scoring position and with two outs, obviously you're running on contact. So in a dead inning where there's two outs and a runner on first, it makes a lot of sense to try to steal second in most situations. Now, one time where it maybe doesn't make as much sense is if the bottom of the order is up. So say like your nine hole hitters up and you steal second, you get caught. Now the nine hole hitter has to start the next inning off being the first batter, which might is probably gonna result in an out more often than not. And then now you go to one, two, three. Whereas in that situation, you might want to let that batter hit and not worry about stealing just so that the nine hitter is done and the next inning you start with a clean top of the order really strong part of your order so that's one thing to consider is where you are in the batting order because coach might say yeah we want to let our nine hole hitter hit so we can start fresh next inning no matter what happens because we have a good chance of having a big inning so that's one thing to consider but again the dead inning steal can be a really advantageous thing where you're just scraping out a run into otherwise you know kind of unfruitful inning. So the next two situations are more like the stealing situations that you want to talk about. So this is the first one here is stealing second with no outs. This is a good stealing situation. And the reason this is a good stealing situation is because it allows your team to manufacture a run. So what does manufacturing a run mean? It means when you're scoring a run without getting base hits. So if you're on second with zero outs, a deep fly ball to right center will allow you to tag up and go to third. Now you're on third with one out. And then assuming that they're conceding the run, you know, it's not like the tying run or the winning run in the last inning, you know, at this point with a runner on third and one out, a ground ball to the shortstop, they'll throw it across to first, they'll let you score, they'll concede the run, or a ground ball to the right side, they'll throw to first, get the out, you'll get to score, or another fly ball where you can score on a sack fly will score you. So manufacturing a run is obviously when you can string together a run without getting base hits to drive them in. So it makes a lot of sense to try to steal yourself into positions where you're then lined up to manufacture a run. So you can manufacture a run if you're on second with no outs, 
or if you're on third with one out. Those are really the only cases where you can do that, where, again, two sack flies or two ground balls up the middle, whatever, will score you. So it makes a lot of sense to get to that position because especially on a really tough, uh, really tough pitcher, you can't really control not getting contact. Like if I'm pitching um, and I'm good and you steal second, it's not like I can just like turn on a switch to punch out the next two batters or I can't just like flip a switch to get a pop up on the infield where no one advances. You really can't control that. So even if you make a good pitch as a really good pitcher, they still might hit that ground ball to the right side that scores the run. Even if I make a really good pitch as a pitcher, they're going to hit fly balls into the outfield. I can't completely prevent that. So that's how you can be a good team and really start to scrape cross runs, even when the pitcher is really, really tough and shutting you down. Even if you're only going to get three or four hits in a game against a really dominant pitcher, if you can get on base, walk, steal second, now one of those couple hits that you might get is going to score your run, and that's a big deal. So the next stealing situation, obviously, is, a, is along the same lines, and that's stealing third with one out. Stealing third with zero or two outs, which I'll cover in a second, is a bad idea. But stealing third with one out is a very good idea if you can make it. Now, you have to be careful if there's a left-handed hitter in the batter's box. That's a very easy throw for the catcher. So stealing with this, this with a right-handed hitter in the box is a lot more advantageous. And you just need to know how strong the catcher's arm is and how well they're holding you on at second. Most pitchers are not great at holding runners on second base. Um, and so, you know, you'll probably get a pretty decent lead. But again, it's a short throw and a catcher with a pretty strong arm with a pretty good release is going to gun you down a lot of the time at third. So you have to be careful here. But again, this makes sense because getting to third with one out means now that pitcher's in trouble because a sack fly is going to score you or even just a, a weak ground ball to the right side is going to score you, assuming they concede the run. So it makes a lot of sense to steal third with one out. So bad times. Do not steal third with zero or two outs. Why? With zero outs, you're pretty much going to score from second regardless. It doesn't even take a single to score you from second. You're already in a manufactured run position. So again, two sack flies will score you from second with no outs. So stealing third, the risk of getting thrown out is much higher than the reward because you're probably going to score anyway. If you're on second with two, on second with no outs, you have three chances to get one single to score you, right? It's a pretty high probability that you'll score. The other time you're stealing third with two outs. Now I understand in youth baseball where it's really sloppy, like more more curveballs and fastballs go to the backstop because catchers aren't very good. And I realize there's a lot more ways to score from third with uh, than there are from second. That being said, when the game is pretty clean, when the catcher will block stuff, when there's not that many wild pitches, when there's not that many errors, you're pretty much only going to score on a base hit, right? So that's the assumption. If you're only going to score on a base hit pretty much, then stealing third with two outs doesn't give you any advantage because you're going to score from second anyway on a base hit because you'll get a big lead. You'll be running on contact. And if you're fast enough to even consider stealing a base, then you're probably fast enough to score from second on most singles, unless it's an absolute missile right the center fielder and he scoops it up and is ready to go. So again, the risk reward there, because you're probably going to score anyway on both these situations, it doesn't make that much sense to steal third unless the catcher is terrible and the pitcher has completely forgotten about you and you can just be in there walking, right? If you can do that or they forget about you and you can steal third pretty much standing up with zero two outs, then fine. But in all of those situations, if it's going to be close and there's going to be a chance that you're going to get thrown out, it's, it's not a smart move. Again, if this is 10U baseball and getting to third means you're probably going to score on a pass ball, then fine. But in most situations where it's real quote unquote baseball, then it doesn't make that much sense. So last thing here, my recommendations for coaches and for players and mostly here for coaches is explain these situations to your boys and let them have free reign to make mistakes. So if you have a team of, let's just say 20 players and half of them have the speed to steal bases, give those guys the green light and say, look, if, if these situations come up, runner on third um, or runner on second, um, one out, stealing third makes sense, right? You want to steal third with one out. So if that situation comes up, I give you guys free reign to do it without a sign. Or you just say, hey, if you, you've got the green light, if you're fast enough and you know you can be in there almost standing up, like it's almost 100% certainty that you'll be safe, then you have the green light to go. So 
but the more you can explain these situations, just like I did, whether it's a good or bad time to go, you're going to allow your kids to play the game, make thoughtful decisions for themselves, use their instincts and grow their baseball IQ. As a coach, you should not be making every decision for them. They will not learn that way. And you do not, I know every coach is like, oh, I explain everything. You don't explain everything that you do. I was a head coach. I could not possibly have the time to explain every sign, every signal, every reason I did everything. So explain this stuff and let your kids have some autonomy. Getting caught stealing in a silly, stupid 14U baseball tournament is not the end of the world. Let them make mistakes. Talk to them about it afterwards. And again, let them have an IQ and grow their baseball instincts. That's a really important part of the game that's being missed. Even in the major leagues today, you see guys making dumb mistakes that seems to indicate that maybe they weren't taught that well as kids, even though they have tremendous baseball talent and skills and physical abilities you don't see as much smart baseball on the base paths as you used to. So hopefully today's video was helpful. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about stealing situations. I answer almost all the questions here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you here in the next video.